So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the three different factoring te techniques that we already know and combine them. And so what I'm going to call this is factoring GCF first, then the other methods. And as we go through this, we're going to refer to this flow chart. It'll make more sense once we do a couple of examples. But we're going to always check for a GCF first. It's very important. After you check for the GCF, then you're just going to look and say, hey, should I go to this difference of two squares factoring that we did before? Or should I try this three-term trinomial factoring? And each of those had a little requirement for your brain. The difference of two squares said you have to say yes to these three questions. And if so, you can follow that difference of two squares uh, pattern. Or the trinomial factoring said, hey, figure out what pair of numbers multiplies to equal the constant term. And at the same time, they, those two numbers add to equal the middle coefficient. And if you could find that pair of numbers, then you use that golden pair of numbers to follow the pattern of trinomial factoring. We're going to use this flow chart as we go through these examples. So we'll start off with this one. The flow chart says, always check for a GCF first. So do I see a greatest common factor? They don't share common variables, but there is a number that'll divide evenly into 5 and 45. And I want to choose the largest number that would do that. In this case, the GCF is 5. 5 divides into here and, and here. So if you remember from your good old GCF factoring days, which were a few days ago, I would write that. Now I can always double check myself. If I distribute this in, I should get that. I should get that. Turns out that I do, so life is good. So I've checked for my GCF. Now I go down this flow chart and I ask myself, are there two terms or three terms? I'm only looking at this piece. The GCF is just going to come along for the ride. So in here, there are two terms. So then I would ask myself these three questions. If there are two terms, are they subtracted and I, can I square root both terms? Well, there were two terms, I already said that. They are subtracted and I can square root that and I can square root that. So floating around in my head, the square root of x squared is an x, the square root of a 9 is a 3. So with those two pieces in place, I can just follow that factoring pattern. The GCF stays and the difference of two squares pattern, the x and the 3, and I'm done. This is the factored form of that. It's a little bit more difficult to multiply this out to see if you come back to that, but if you do this at every turn, <laughs> equals that, and <laughs> <laughs> equals that, you'll know you're also right. I'm going to do this next problem quicker. There's no variables in common, but there is a number that will divide evenly into 8 and 32. You might think it's 2, but there's something better than that. You might think it's 4, but there's something better than that. That something better is 8. So then I get x squared minus 4. Now I take a look at this piece. There's two terms. So I can follow the difference of two squares checklist. Beep, beep, beep. And I'll end up with x plus 2, x minus 2. And that's my final factored form. One a little bit more complicated. It shares variables. So my GCF is going to include the variable that has the smallest exponent. I also have a GCF between these two. A 3 is a number that divides evenly into 3 and 27. So my GCF is 3x. Left inside is x squared minus 9. I can always distribute back to make sure life is good. This GCF is just going to come along for the ride. So when I go to the next step, I just recopy it. And this piece follows the difference of two squares, two terms subtracted, and I can square root both of them. And I have my final answer.
These next two are going to get a little bit uh, murkier. We're still going to follow this flowchart, but in these two examples, we're going to end up going down this side of the flowchart. So I take a look at this one and I say, hey, they all don't have a variable, so that means I can't have a variable in my GCF, but between a 2, a 4, and a 30, a 2 multiplies into every piece. So I've factored out a GCF, and now as I flow down my flowchart, I see that there are three terms because I'm only paying attention to the inside. There are three terms, so now what I need to ask myself is, what are all the numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to equal positive 2? So all the numbers that multiply to negative 15 are up there. One of these pair is the golden pair because they add to positive 2. These two add to negative 14. These two add to positive 14. They add to negative 2. Ding, 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 ding. These two add to positive 2. So I found the golden pair. The GCF stays. I follow this pattern. x minus 3, x plus 5. And I have my factored form. Final example, three terms, but they all have a variable. That means in my GCF, I will have an x squared. Now I think about the coefficient part. There's a one, a four, and a three. There's no number other than one that multiplies or divides evenly into one, four, and three. So there's no part to my coefficient GCF, or I say it's a one. Either way, it doesn't matter. So now, what's left on the inside? x squared plus 4x plus 3. Now, factoring out that GCF gets a little bit rough sometimes. Remember, you're putting in here whatever works so that when you check yourself, the multiplication worked out. So when you... If you don't end up back there, that means you need to adjust one of those. At this point on my flowchart, I've done my GCF, and I see that what's remaining has three terms. So I think about this statement. What pair of numbers multiplies to equal the constant term and adds to equal the middle term? In this case, it's a pretty small list. 1 and 3 multiply to positive 3 but so does negative one and negative three. It's easy to forget about the negatives. It's easy to forget about the negatives in a case like this. Um, if you would have forgotten about the negatives, you would have gotten away with it in this case because this is the pair that multiplies to three and adds to positive four. So now I can get my final answer. This is my golden pair. This is my factored form of that. If you took the time to do all the and then multiply the x squared, you would end up back there. So what you're doing in any factoring problem is always check for the GCF first. That's your first move no matter what. From there, you can see if you have other factoring available.